<laughs> this is my, I just had vitamins and my stomach feels weird. <laughs> <laughs> you guys ever have vitamins on like an empty stomach and you feel like you're going to throw up? It's for not like a good idea. Two seconds. It's definitely not a good idea. Kind of feeling that way right now. Okay, share. Sure. I'm sure. Hold please. Yes, Talk. it's happening. Hi. Uh, hello. Hi. 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 Hello. Good to see you. We love you. We Hi. miss you. We Hi. haven't seen you in a while. It's been a while. Cam Adair. Oh, hi, Cam. Blup! Rastafari. I can hear myself. Yeah, look at all those gratitude things. I know, I love the gratitude flag. Mary, Glenn, the whole crew is on right now. How do I show this on my timeline? I... Help me. Just, you hit share. What? <laughs> <laughs> my wife, his oh, Facebook no. challenge. You no, share publicly. Share now. Okay, go. Yeah. I just shared it. There it goes. We're on. Right. And you guys share it too. Share this. It's about to get real. It is. So today we're talking about... Money. Money. And... Energy. And... Conditional... Love. Oh. Ooh. It just Ooh. got real. It just got real. And here's why. Because a lot of people are avoiding talking about the thing that's like so obvious. Mm hmm That we want to kind of bring to the attention. So let's talk about that first. What? Conditional love? Conditional love. Do it. So, most people are like, I just want unconditional love in my life. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm just waiting for somebody who loves me unconditionally. Uh -huh. I love you unconditionally. <laughs> no, you don't. Stop it. You don't. No. You don't love people unconditionally. It's, you trade. You trade. You exchange. Yeah. Like, you barter. Yeah. You, you buy my bullshit, I'll buy your bullshit. We're okay with each other's bullshit. As long bullshit. as we stay in the parameters of this bullshit. Yeah, like I love Preston well. unconditionally as long as... He doesn't become a mass murderer. As long as... He doesn't begin to uh, punch little babies in the stomach. I would definitely not love you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where that one came from. I don't know where that one That's a terrible thing to do. <laughs> punch don't ever baby. punch babies in the stomach. Don't do it. It's the worst thing you could don't ever do. do it. <sighs> so, Kiana said, I love everything unconditionally. Awesome. Yeah. Can we'll you see. teach us? Because yeah. seriously, like... It, it is one of those things, like, it sounds like a really great thing. It's great in theory. It is. It's such a good thing in theory. Like, even parents with their children, like, I love my children unconditionally, until they do some shit that you're like, that little yeah. person. You know, <laughs> parents, parents definitely have a little more leeway with the old, with the old unconditional part. Mm -hmm. uh, but as we've seen uh, in the divorce rate being higher than it's ever been in the world, as we've seen in... Um, life in general. Yeah, the even religion, you know, like so many of us, you know, claim certain religions and we say that we're, we're here for love, but if you don't you know, believe my religion, then I don't love you. Or if you come across the border, then I'll shoot you and I hate you. And so uh, yeah. it's just an interesting thing. And this came up, why this came up, how this came up was Alexi and I were in, the, in Turkey, right? We were in Istanbul. We were in Istanbul, and we were walking, and I noticed these uh, a Muslim gentleman with um, he had a few wives with him, and they were all talking, and I was just thinking, like, interesting, I, because if I right said, hey, Alexi, I love you so much, and you know what? I think you're so awesome that I think I should have seven more of you. I think I'm going to get seven more wives. Enter when I say, there's not no more one of me. There's only one of me. You can't get two or three or four. There's only one of yes. me. Yes. And so, you know, uh, we'd like to say that I love this person so much and it's so unconditional that even if the conditions change, right? So even if the person decides that they want to go into polyamory or whatever the hell they want to do, that screw it. Do whatever you want, because I conditionally, unconditionally love you. And to me, this is absolute bullshit. We love each other, and we have conditions with our love. Based it's, on the parameters that are set up when we meet yes, each other. It's like, Which is why yes. most people go, oh, I, you're not the same person I married. It's not the same person yep. I started dating six months ago. And we hear this all the time. P and I coach a lot of people, and we're constantly hearing this. It's just not the same. Yes. Of course it's not the same, because we're constantly growing, and relationships are very conditional. Relationships are, does this work for me? Does this work with my boundaries? Does this match up with my values? Yes. Now, love can be, love can be 
unconditional where I could love this man unconditionally, but I may not choose to stay in relationship with him yes. if he starts punching babies in the stomach. Yes. Understand. <laughs> that, that would not work for me. So we we really just wanted to like talk about like Captain Obvious here in the room, which is yes. yeah. love can be unconditional? Most love, most of the romantic storybook love that we've all bought into, the Disney love, is pretty damn conditional. Well, and, and it, relationships, as soon as you bring two people together in a relationship, relationships become conditional. Yes. Based on your boundaries, based on your values, based on how you choose to live your life. And if a person no longer aligns with your values or your boundaries, then all of a sudden your conditions aren't being met. So love can be unconditional, but relationships are very conditional. Yes. Yeah. And it is a practice. It is a practice, Susan. And nobody's perfect. No. And so most of the time, based on results, based on results, not, you know, whimsical, esoteric thinking, based on results, because all of us from a logical mind could sit here and say, I love unconditionally. I love everyone equally, right? But when the figure walks into the room, or when there's a bombing, our, our, our unconditional love changes. Then it's okay for us to pat down every Muslim a thousand times at the airport. Then it's okay, right? Then it changes. Our conditions change based on what's happening. The circumstances, yes, it all becomes a practice, right? And you don't have to, um, what's the word? Uh, especially when it comes to your kids, of course. You love your kids unconditionally, and sometimes you don't like them. Sometimes you want to punch them. Sometimes. <laughs> I don't know if you ever want to punch your kids. Don't do that either. Um, somebody asked, um, does love have a timeline? And no, I mean, I think you can fall in love in a moment mm -hmm. with somebody. Um, you can fall in love within a week. You know, love is, there's so many things that love is. Like, we believe that love is technically everything. And somebody also said, I don't know who it was, yeah. but somebody said, that your conditions and your boundaries evolve as you grow, and they absolutely do. My conditions, even a year ago, are completely different than they are now, but I still have conditions and boundaries, you know? So it's really apparent that we, we get to start acknowledging our conditions and our boundaries and being honest with our partners and saying, hey, here's my non-negotiables, here's what works for me, here's what doesn't work yeah. for me, and I'm gonna love you anyway, but if these aren't met, this isn't gonna work. Yeah. I mean, here's the thing, domestic violence. Let's just take that for example. We have conditions around that. Mm -hmm. So as much as we want to say in the storybook, I love you forever and I'll be there no matter what, if somebody starts beating you, nine out of 10, that love is conditional. Yeah. And you will practice and learn how to love another. And so for me, this is, and for us, once you have that on the table, it's a lot easier to navigate the relationship. It's not, you know, I think that so many people come into marriages and into relationships with this storybook idea that it's always going to be floating off into the rainbows. It's not. Like, <laughs> shit happens. It does. And sometimes you don't like your partner. You love them. And, and sometimes you don't like them. Yes. Yeah. Um, so true. Um, and yeah, love is, is the practice ground. Relationships are the practice ground for us to truly discover what it means to love ourselves yes. unconditionally. And, and truly, that's, that is the only love that there is, is the love of the self. And I think love and relationships are conditional because our own relationships with ourselves are highly conditional. You know, we, we celebrate ourselves barely when things go well and we beat ourselves up when things don't go so well. And that right there is a perfect mirror for how we show up in our relationships. If we can't even acknowledge and love ourselves when things are going well, yes. how do we ever expect to truly, truly, truly be present in love with another? So it truly is all a reflection of Brazil. Susan, Lay Susan Leahy, who's awesome. Susan! If you're not following her, she's fantastic and We beautiful. love you. Uh, How's Mexico? We miss you. She said, <laughs> my kids are my place to practice love because, wow, sometimes uh, want to punch them but I don't, <laughs> uh, but don't, but wow, they're my greatest teachers. Yes. Yeah, I'm sure. You know, yeah. we don't have kids and we don't pretend to know what it feels like to have kids. We do uh, support a lot of people who have lots of kids and we hear common things over and over and over again. And so uh, the kids thing is like in some ways a caveat, um, but you know, there's some people who come through their mother's womb, but they, that's not their mother. 
That's not their mother, that's not their father. And so some of that love is conditional as well. Um, and it's fantastic. It's all perfect. All of it's always perfect. All the time. But I just think it would be really beautiful if we stopped bullshitting ourselves. I think yeah. the divorce rate would change drastically if we had these conversations and, and stopped pretending like everything is perfect until it's not. I'm fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. The kids are fine. The job's fine. Jeff's doing fine. We're all fine. Can until we talk about that? Like, yeah. can we please put a stop to this whole conversation? Like, everything's good. Yeah. It's all good. It's is not it? good all the time. It's not good all the time. And it's okay for it to not be good all the time. Like people, people, people. The reason why most people are suffering is because they're so stuffed up to the top of things are good. Everything's fine. No, it's not sometimes. <laughs> and that's okay. And the more we talk about that, the more we get honest about it, and the more we stop bullshitting ourselves about how life is just lifing. Life is just lifing, guys. There are some highs and lows. There's a good and bad. There's so many things about life that just happen, and so many of us have this expectation that everything has to be perfect, and we have to make sure everything looks good for everyone outside, and if they knew what was actually happening behind closed doors, my goodness. Yes. Don't you feel like you want to explode sometimes? Yes. So be honest, and it starts with the honesty of self. It starts with like just getting real about what's actually happening, what's actually coming up for you, and the things you're actually facing off with. You know, I don't care if you're freaking, you know, Tony from down the street or Tony Robbins. Everybody has their shit. No matter how much you know, yes. everybody has their shit. If you're human, welcome to the game of life. You have your stuff, you have your things you get to work through, and we get to start being honest about that and having real conversations. Not just like surface level. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. You know what's also an interesting thing? What? Most people don't even know how to love themselves, let alone unconditionally love another. Mm -hmm. And it's this interesting joke that we think it's so easy. And that's, this is an ego trick anyway. The ego tricks us into thinking, oh, um, if I could just give enough over there, and, and you know, it, which is a form of control. We're trying to control the whole damn thing because we're so afraid to lose anything. Yes. Um, and so it's all good. <sighs> and it always has been. Yeah, just exhale. Yes. <laughs> just exhale. Yes. I think so many people are like, <gasps> ah, this is how I need to go through life. Just exhale and sink into the fact that we really are just all on the journey of revealing more and more and more to ourselves yes. every single day Revealing. and no matter how much you know no matter how much work you do no matter how much money you have you're still human uh -huh. that's the great equalizer the human thing we all poop we all eat food some people actually believe that women don't poop but fact uh -huh. they do yeah speaking of poop <laughs> We just both got colonics today, and it was fantastic. Yeah. I feel like a thousand pounds lighter. Yeah. Um, we do not lock the doors in our house. Shit. Uh, Everybody poops. With the doors open. That's actually a kid's book, Everybody Poops. Oh, It's awesome. a good book. Yeah. <laughs> we did our colonics today, and it was amazing and beautiful, and I feel super clear. Um, you know, the, the gut, guys. The gut, gut health is everything. everything. If you yeah. don't take a shower from within yeah. for 20-something years... That's going to cause some pretty interesting clogging yes. um, and probably cause some damage in other ways. I'd like to just like present something really quickly. Do it, baby. Presence it. How interesting it is that in a society that is so ashamed to talk about one of the most natural things, poop, Yes. it is no wonder why so many of us feel so repressed, oh, for sure. stifled, and feel like we're struggling. Yeah. We can't even talk about poop. Yep. Barely can talk about sex because my god if you talk about sex, you're just this demon and this evil person. <laughs> Meanwhile, we all came from sex. Yeah, Captain obvious here. Yeah, and it's no wonder why so many of us feel so freaking like it just repressed and so many people are just dying on the inside. Yes, to, they, they don't know how to experience joy. They don't know how to experience passion. They don't know how to tap in to their soul's purpose and their gifts yes. because they are so repressed and they can't even feel like they can talk about poop. Poop is the most natural thing on the planet next to sex and yet we can't even talk about it. 
So yeah. start talking about poop. Start there and then end up talking about sex and then your problems. Do it. All of it. Do it. <laughs> Do it all at the same time. All at the same time. Poop and sex. All the, I'd be a little tricky. That would, that would be... Wouldn't, wouldn't I don't be, know how I feel about that. Well, yeah, wouldn't that would be, be as, a boundary for me, I yeah, think. Okay. Um, <laughs> but sex is beautiful. Oh, wow. It's so beautiful. Such a gift. Sex is a conversation. Sex is a it flow. Is. Sex is uh, this universal conversation that is really... You know, it starts here. Yeah. It starts and ends here. You know, like how much of of your heart, how much of your 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 soul can you reveal in that conversation? A lot of people um, have an easy time getting naked physically, yeah. but they have a really tough time getting naked yes. from the heart. Yeah, and and that's another interesting thing too. It's like we're a society that's having more sex than we've ever had. Yeah in general, you yeah. know, with Tinder and all these apps and porn and, you know, there's more sex available than there ever has been before, yet there's less connection happening in the world Ooh. because so many people are using sex as a mechanism, as a coping strategy to numb themselves and turn themselves off from what's actually happening in life yep. because if we can get that quick hit of dopamine where mm. it's like, ooh, I feel good, I feel valued, I feel mm -hmm. amazing, but then 20 minutes later I feel like crap, I feel empty, I feel like I need more. Yeah. More. <laughs> Let me go and text that dude that's going to give me attention. Let me go on Instagram and like a few photos or check how many people liked mine. One more hit. We're in this society of like constant validation through sex and likes and comments and all of those things. Um, so maybe a challenge to just take on with yourself whenever you have sex the next time is yeah. like, just explore, how do you feel afterwards? Yeah. How do you feel afterwards? Do you feel like you've expanded? Yeah. Or do you feel like you've contracted? Yes. Do you feel a little emptier on the inside? Or do you feel a little fuller on the inside? Yeah. Depending on how you feel afterwards, it's a solid indication about the intention that went into having sex in the first place. So that's just a little exercise yes. you can take on. And it, just interestingly enough, because you know, it takes two to tango and however that sex happens, whether it's male and male or female and male and all of that good stuff. All those combinations. Horses and people. And There's what, a lot of combinations. All kinds of stuff happens. <laughs> yeah. But let's just talk about, and I want to presence, um, how we teach little boys and how we even talk about our private parts, right? Our private parts. Right? We, we, we call them our, 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 what do we call them? Our boo boos and our, uh, our, our, our wee wees. And, and we, we, we bring so much shame around our sexual organs yeah. at a very early age that by the time we're you know, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, it's very clear that n most people are not okay. <laughs> Your parents are not okay with this conversation. And, and, then, and then compound that with teaching a little boy that big boys don't cry? Yeah. And you tell him it's not okay to experience his, his experience, to feel what he's feeling? You take that little boy and make him a 15-year-old, and then make him a 25-year-old, and then you put him in a relationship with a, with, a, with a woman or whoever? He can't even fucking open his heart. Yeah. So, of course, the sex is meaningless. It's just this. He might as well be jacking off. And by the way, he jacks off and watches porn all damn day because he's checked out because he's never been able to experience himself, yeah. his true manhood. Yeah, and talking about body shame, I mean, we start off at such a young age yes. with uh, shaming our bodies. And for young women, that starts off at 8, 9, 10 years old when we start to hear our parents and our mothers talk about diet and I'm fat yes. and I don't look good enough yes. and I'm stress and we start taking that on and we really get to start looking at how we're imprinting those around us and I mean I remember the first time I, I heard the word diet was in a Seventeen magazine article and I was like 9 or 10 years old with my sister and we went through my mom's cabinet and grabbed saltine crackers and we were rationing saltine crackers and we're like, well, we can only have this because we have to go on a diet because every magazine at that time in the grocery store, even, even if I didn't open it, says diet, 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 this, diet, that. Everybody's mm -hmm. talking about diets, commercials on TV, diet, lose weight. This. Yeah. I was freaking like nine or 10, yes. obviously with no weight to lose, but it was imprinted in my brain. So. We just get to get really conscious about the messaging that we have around our kids, around ourselves. Yes. For any of you that um, suffer from insecurity or lack of confidence, turn off the TV. Turn off the TV, 
don't scroll through Instagram, don't read magazines, and I promise you, you'll start feeling a lot better about yourself. Yeah, start, it's that simple. Start unfollowing people. <laughs> that you compare yourself to. Exactly. Yes. Take, take, because the, the comparison, and, and you're buying into the lie. You're buying into this thing that, you know, Kylie Jenner or whoever the hell these people are, are the ideal pretty, that, yeah. that you need to go and shoot your butt up so you can look, you know, more African, which, funny enough, Africans and African Americans were made fun of for so long for having big butts and now it's the thing, right? So, or shoot your lips up and try to make that look better and all of this stuff. Like, it's all bullshit. You have your ladder up against a wall that does not work for you. Yeah. Yeah, sorry, my necklace feels like it's choking me. <laughs> well, I don't want you to be choked, baby. I don't want to be choked. Maybe that's why. Don't I'm choke thinking. my baby. Don't choke me, necklace. My boo. All right, what else did we say my we were love. talking about? Yes, uh, we said money and poop energy. And energy. There we go. Um, energy and money are the same. Yes, they are. So we can kind of talk about Very it. Very deeply connected. Um, that's a weird face that just. Kyle <laughs> just joined us. Kyle lifted. <laughs> did you see my weird face? I didn't. Let me see it. Don't do that face ever again. <laughs> Don't do that face. Do you guys yeah. even catch yourself like making a really horrible that face? That was the worst face I've ever I have, seen wait, in my life. So, so, just funny side note for a second. Sometimes when I go on Instagram stories or like Facebook Live, I'll go and open up my phone and it's down here. And it's like that image of like yeah, your, your, the bottom chin. Of your chin. Yeah, yeah. And I look at it and I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> like, what the fuck is that? It's like the worst <laughs> angle ever. And it's just, it's just <laughs> Yeah. So, ah! <laughs> Have you guys, um, BT Dub, my wife is amazing. Thanks, babe. Did you know that? Did you know that my wife is amazing? Did you know that she's the most beautiful woman in the world um, from the inside out? And that I'm deeply, madly in love with her. Um, it's conditional love. Um, to be clear, <laughs> FYI. I love her so much. She's amazing. And she's so beautiful. And look at her highlights. Have you guys seen her amazing highlights? I don't know if they can really see them in black and white, uh -huh. but they're there. Uh -huh. She's extraordinary. Absolutely near. Um, yes, money, energy. Let's money. talk about money. Yes. First of all, what do you guys want to talk about? Is there any comments or questions or anything you guys want to talk about that we can get into right now? Eli, just enter the building. What Hello. is up, my man? What do you guys want to chat about? Put a question in there. Put a comment in there. Love you all. Thank you for being a part of our family. Emily Gallagher, Conscious Boss. Um, you're punching above your weight 100%. Emily, don't start with me. <laughs> Just don't start with we me. We love you, I will man. come for you. Any advice on getting over someone you can't be with? I've never had a connection. Like I have with him, but he's in another relationship. Whoa, where'd you go? All right, so we lost your comment, but we're just gonna talk about what we read. Um, any advice for getting over someone that you can't be with, you feel this way that you've never felt, guess what, you will feel that way again. You will. And, and guess what, even more, you will feel deeper about somebody else. And here's the thing that a lot of us don't get. We get so attached to one person being the person. Yes. And there's this whole conversation of like, you're one, find your one. There's like one million out there that could potentially be your one. <laughs> and we say that from a really beautiful, amazing space because quite frankly, if you are in the position of an open heart and you find somebody else who's in the position of an open heart, you can't help but not fall in love with that person. Yes. And then it's just all a matter of, am I attracted to this person? Do I want to choose to engage intimately with them? Do we share similar values and boundaries and all of those things? And then it's just a choice to be in a relationship. So how you get over somebody that you t can't technically be with is you gotta move on. Like, and it's, it sounds so simple, but it's so true. Like you just have to detach. Stop texting that person, stop reaching out, stop living in the fantasy that this thing can happen because it clearly can't and he's in a relationship with somebody else yeah. and you get to move on and truly honor yourself because you're not honoring yourself if you're waiting for somebody and pining after somebody who's not available. Yeah. And that is one of the, the greatest ways that we beat ourselves up is we, we go for a job or we go for a person and we attach ourselves to a place or an idea like I need to be pregnant by the time I'm 30. We attach ourselves yes. to this idea of I'm what our 35. life is supposed to I should look have like. A house. I, I should I, I should, should be a millionaire. I by should now. be married. And we're attached and we're like this and I'm we in wonder, my late twenties. I'll never find someone ah, ever again. Ever. And we wonder why we're freaking stressed out about life because we're attached to this idea and meanwhile we're hanging on for dear life yes. when we're here. And life is giving you a million other options, yes. but you're missing it because you're so freaking hell-bent on it being that dude. 
or that career yes. or that story. And we really get to honor what life is giving us. And if life is giving you a clear indication that this is not your person, listen. Yes. Listen. And listen. Honor yourself. Listen, listen. listen. So, uh, yes, you're, you're just like uh, God has not stopped talking in a book. Um, there's, there's, there's so much more to you and to this experience that you signed up for. And if you get caught up trying to hold on to what was, you miss all that is, period. I'm just re regurgitating and reiterating what Alexi just said. Literally. Do it, baby. Literally. We're always creating, and it takes 90 days to make or break any habit. And so you have had, let's just say, a year worth of a habit. And now you're out of that habit, and you're still hell-bent and stuck on trying to, to hold on to it. And I understand, your heart's hurting, and you thought that he was the one, and you thought that was your guy. It's not your guy. Yeah. It's not your guy. And, and... The universe has so much more in store for you. And sometimes, what you, what, so, so here's the thing to catch, right? So there's the, the conscious mind, 5%. 5% is the conscious mind. 95% is the subconscious mind running the show, running the story, the maps, the subconscious bullshit, unconscious stories that were created between zero and seven, all of those traumas and all of that stuff that you get so attached to. Yeah. Right, but the universe is is moving a thousand steps ahead of you. God is moving a thousand steps ahead of you, and so sometimes it clears way, it clears the path you asked for to be to be honored in a very particular way. You asked to 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 learn how to stand in your queendom in a very particular way, and so the universe said, "I got you, boo." I got you, and in order to do that, we're gonna move some space. We're going to eliminate some people out of your life in a particular way. Remember, energy can never die and has never been born, and therefore, it just transmutes. It just changes into different forms, and so the love will never die. Yeah. But your guy, your person, oh, that person's still out there. That person's in North Dakota. That person is in East Africa. That person is wherever they are. They're in the grocery store right now thinking about you, but you're so in your fucking way. That you can't, can't you, you're, not, you're not a space for them yet. And, and the craziest thing is, is the universe is giving you, universe, God, source, energy, whatever yes. you want to say, is giving you an example yes. and a test that's going, nope, not me, not me. And you're going, but it is, mm -hmm. but it is. And the universe, guy, person, insert face here, is like, nope, not me, not available. I'm in a relationship. And you're like, but, but it is you. Yes. It's totally you. Listen. Listen to life. So many of us are not listening to life. We're resisting the signs that life is giving us, yet life is here for us. Yes. And this comes down to relationships, to money, to career, to anything. Most of us are so hell-bent on our paradigm of what it has to look like that we're missing the abundance, we're missing the relationship, we're missing the joy, we're missing yes. the gift and the way we can serve in the world because no. it's got to look like this because this is how my parents did it and it's, it's got to be this way. No, it doesn't. <laughs> Listen to life. So many of us are like, <laughs> I don't understand why life's not giving me any signs. And life is like, hello. Yeah. Hi. Here. <laughs> Hi. 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 Here. Pay attention. I see you. Yes. I got you. All right. Let's yes. transition to money. <laughs> so, um, start with this because I just had this hit earlier. Sometimes the how does not reveal itself until you are knee deep in the what and the why. Mm -hmm. So, a lot of you are putting the cart before the horse. You're so hell-bent on how. How am I gonna make more money? How am I gonna become more abundant? How, how, how? How but, am I gonna find love in my life? But the moment you get committed to the why and the what, what am I here to give? What is on my heart? What is that thing that has been calling me forward since the moment I stepped on this planet? What is that thing? What can, let, me, let, me, let me follow that. The moment you go knee deep into the what, into the why, the how will reveal itself. And what that is, in a freaking nutshell, which I love that, baby. Yes. Thank what you. The, you're, wel you're welcome. You better kiss me. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, why I love that is because money is energy, yes, right? Yes, it is. And energy is constantly flowing in the world. Everything is energy, and energy is in a constant flow. It's in a constant state of flux. And what happens is most of us are like major energy blockers in our life. Well, nope. 
no, I can't, don't come in. Yes. No, we can't receive anything. So we're blocking off all sorts of energy in our life and wondering why we're experiencing scarcity in love, scarcity in uh, money, scarcity yes. in health, because we're blocking ourselves off from the natural flow of everything. Yes. So what he's saying is, open up the flow. Open up the Stop chain. hoarding your gifts. Stop hoarding your service. Stop hoarding your love. Give your love, give your service, give your gift, give your voice, and you'll start to see that that outflow nice. creates an inflow. Oh. Because you're opening up the channel. Yes. And so many people are going... One river. Yeah, so many people are like, well, I, I can't give away my gifts. I can't like put stuff out there because then nobody will buy from me. And it's like, watch what happens if you actually serve from a place of why. Mm -hmm. If you serve from a place of why, I have to serve. I have to share what's on my heart. I have to share my gift. If you keep serving and keep putting the yes. outflow of energy out, guess what happens? Reciprocated back. Yes. Energy out, energy in. Yes. And you don't do it for the energy in, but you do it so that your channel opens up and you can experience what it feels like to actually feel alive. Yes. Because alive equals energy. Yes. Energy equals aliveness. So if you are feeling dead in your life, it's because you're stagnant energy. Yep, blocking the energy. Blocking and if your flow. finances are feeling dead in your life, it's because you're stagnant with your energy, with yes. your outflow. So if you're experiencing stagnancy in your money, how can you put more energy out? How can you serve more? How can you love more? How can you reach out more and network more and market more? Put more energy out and stop bitching about what's not coming in. Yes, yes. And and just to add to that, right? So so it's not the, the happy people that are grateful, it's the grateful people mm -hmm. that are happy, yes. right? And so the, the, that, 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 the energy of gratitude has a vibration, and that vibration attracts. And some, sometimes, a lot of the times, one of the biggest issues that people have, and I was just having this conversation with my amazing mother, is it, they find it very easy to give, 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 right? Oh, I'll give to you, I'll give to you, I'll give to you. But they block the flow because they do not allow space to receive. Yeah. They do not, they're not a space for, for receiving, right? Oh, I love your dress. Oh, this whole thing. No, it's okay. Mm -hmm. I love your hair. Right? Oh, this... I love your hair. Yes. We deflect it. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, so what it may mean, because everything is touching everything, guys. Everything is touching everything. Always. And so a rising tide lifts all boats. A rising tide lifts all boats. You, 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 you raise the tide over here and you're receiving and the giving. The giving raises too, and then then you're in the flow that Alexi was talking about. You're in that universal current. Yeah, and and the current too, and this is a big thing. A lot of people are like, "Oh, I love giving. I I'm such a giver. I'm giving so much of my love, but it's not real giving. Mm -hmm. It's giving laced with expectation. You're expecting something back. Yep. Well, I gave my love to him, and I appreciated him, and he didn't appreciate me back. <laughs> wow, you never truly gave. Like true giving is. Here, let me give from the overflow. Let me pour into you. Yes. Not because I want anything back, but because I really get to pour into you yes. because that makes my heart smile. Yes. That's real giving. And, you know, so many people don't get that you really have to receive first. And I was just talking about this in Soul School because this month we're talking about abundance. And abundance is all about filling the cup first. You gotta fill it up, fill it up, fill it up, fill it up, fill it up so that you can give what's extra. So you can give from the overflow. And when you give, it comes back. And you fill up, fill up, fill up, give from the overflow. That's what abundance means. Abundance means to overflow. If you wanna live an abundant life, whether it's your finances, your love, your health, whatever it is, your joy, your passion, your purpose, you have to be giving from a space of overflow. And overflow comes from a space of being. Mm -hmm. Overflow comes, you fill your cup, when you be love. You fill your cup when you be abundant wealth. Like what would it feel like to be abundant wealth? Mm -hmm. Like what, what would the experience, so many people are walking around with scarcity. Oh, I can't pay my bills this month. Yes. Oh my God, I don't have enough. Oh, I need to. You have a device that you are watching this thing on. <laughs> you are fine. You are more than fine. And yes. I hate to break it to every single person out there. And this is, I'm speaking this to the 22 year old me who was obsessed we're trying to get more, 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 more. If you have a roof over your head, if you have access to clean or semi-clean water, because that's debatable with the fluoride and all the stuff in the water, but if you have access to tap water, if you have access to a roof over your head, if you've got some sort of device in your hand, guess what? You're not gonna die. You're doing okay. Like you are more than surviving. 
So now go outside, go into nature, look around you and get grateful for the fact that you're alive. Get grateful for the fact that you can feel the sun on your face. Get grateful for the fact that there is breath in your body. Get grateful for the fact that you have a consciousness mm. that is capable of understanding these words mm -hmm. and everything that's happening here. Get grateful for your life and I promise you, you will feel wealthy like that. Instantaneously. There are so many people who are beyond wealthy when it comes to numbers, but are so poor of spirit. Oh, yes. So poor of spirit because they're enslaved and entrapped by the wealth that they created, by the business that they created, that they have to maintain their status, their job, their house, their car, they have to maintain so they keep moving and working and they don't have any space to actually be grateful for life. We know people who don't have much, but who are so freaking wealthy because they recognize that they're alive and they recognize that that alone is the gift. Life is the gift. And the minute you can accept and embrace life as a gift, you win. You win the game. That is the secret. And if you guys want more money, like, you know, we get that people want money. The phone's dying. That's what Preston's doing. We get that people want more money. But if you want more money, get grateful. Because a lot of you are, are wanting more money and you're wanting more stuff because you feel like you're not enough yet. So when you're acting from the intention of, well, I don't feel like I'm enough yet until I make this amount of money in my business. Well, I don't feel like I'm enough yet until I have these kind of, kinds of clothes and bags and purses and shoes and cars and houses mm -hmm. and zip code. Guess what? If you're trying to earn money from I'm not good enough, you're just going to get back not good oh, enough. Yeah. Period. And it's a chase that will never end. It's a carrot on the stick like this that you'll constantly be running after and you'll never win. You'll never get there. Sorry, I just went on a rant. It's <laughs> <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Sorry. Perfect. So, um, we love you guys. We do. Um, any other questions or comments? Uh, we may hop off. I don't know if this is actually going to last. It oh. looks like it's. Do you know how dead your phone is? Uh, it's do at 10% left. Oh. Um, yeah. Here's, so. here, all right. Here's 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 story. So, um, a few maybe seven years ago, uh, I knew that I was getting ready. I knew that it was time for me to step in. I knew that it was my calling and my duty to uh, give from the overflow, to to give my gift. But I also knew, I also knew that I actually was not ready to hold what it is that I was calling in, which is a gift. This was a huge gift. Mm -hmm. A lot of you guys are very excited about having more, right? We've become a society that, that is fixated on more, better, different, right? So we want more money, a better car, a different mate, all of the above, right? So we become this, this type of society. But the issue is that most of us actually can't hold what it is that we're asking for. Yeah. And so, one of the best things you could do when it comes, when it pertains to abundance, financial abundance, right? Because we've been talking about the consciousness of abundance, right? Because abundance, when it's all said and done, is not a number or, or a destination. It's a place you live from. Yeah, it's and the so, art of living well. And so, for me, I knew I wasn't ready. I knew I couldn't actually hold it. And so, instead of trying to hurry up and declare that I'm this guy, I asked myself a powerful question. What can I do right now? that would bring in more financial abundance, that would still be in alignment with that which I am calling in? And that question, powerful question, brought up three different answers. One was um, Smile Surf School. So I love surfing, I love teaching surfing, and I decided that, oh, I can make a spiritual surf school. I can make the first spiritual surf school in LA. Another one was massage therapy. I actually loved doing that and I thought this is a way I can actually add it to my income. Because a lot of you guys want practical, practical, right? I love the esoteric to give me practical. Practical is you ask yourself, where can I cut out some of my scrolling? Where can I cut out some of you know, that time that I just sit there going through Netflix yes. and actually add to my life and my abundance by doing something that I can run? And so for me, I, I recognized, okay, Smile Surf School. I can teach surfing. I love surfing. I can become my own boss. I did that for uh, like nine months, got myself ready. I went in the gym, still doing my thing, getting, preparing, preparing for what it is that I was actually calling in. 
created a little extra nest egg, a little extra cushion. And then when I knew, I jumped. Yeah. And I want to add to this because a lot of people, um, they talk about, you know, I have a job and I hate it. Yes. And, and what, what should I do? Should I just quit my job? No, don't just quit your job. Because here's the thing, if you cannot show up to your job with 100% of you, no. if you cannot show up to your job with joy, if you cannot bring your gift to whatever it is you're doing, whether you're working at a Fortune 500 company or working at McDonald's, yeah. you won't do it anywhere else. You won't do it anywhere else. So the number one thing we tell people who come to us for coaching, like, hey, should I quit my job? No. Have you given 100% of yourself to your job yet? If you haven't done it there, you're not going to do it anywhere else. So don't kid yourself and think it's the job. It's not. Hmm. It's you. It's you. And we can bring our highest excitement to every single area of our life if we choose to. Or we can focus on all the stuff we hate about our job. I can't believe I have to work with these people. I can't believe that. Da, da, da. How many of you know that you bitch about your job a little too much? Mm -hmm. That used to be me all day. I used, I literally, I bartended to do what Preston just talked about so that I could afford training, so I could afford working with mentors who cost a fortune, so I could afford my lifestyle, so I could afford a nonprofit organization and going to Africa every year. I bartended. I don't even drink and party, but I was in nightlife four nights a week out of a sacrifice. But guess what? I hated it for a really long time, so it was painful. Mm -hmm. It was so painful when I hated it, and I was complaining and bitching, and it was just miserable. Mm -hmm. And then I shifted. I was like, oh, let me just recognize that I can bring all this stuff that I'm into and have deep conversations with people at a place where most stuff is surface. Let me recognize that this gives me freedom. Let me recognize and appreciate that this gives me access to meet really interesting people from all walks of life. And the minute I shifted that, it's like the whole world shifted. Of course. So you get to bring your highest excitement, you get to bring your gifts, your talent, your love, your joy, your unique fingerprint to everything you do, whether or not you like it. Because everything in life is a practice. Everything in life is an opportunity for you to show up as you. Yes. And, and he, most people are thinking they have to show up as somebody else to make it work. Yep. Newsflash, it's not working because you're not showing up as who you are in the fullest expression yet. Yep. That's why you haven't attracted the person. It's why you haven't attracted the career or dream job or whatever it is. It's why you haven't attracted the abundant wealth and health. It's because you're not living the fullest expression of yourself yet. Because yeah. you're it's, bitching and complaining and, be, yes. and, and being a brat. And here's the thing to really understand, when you do that, when you, when you actually show up to that raggedy ass job that you've had for 20 years, when you show up to that like it's a gift, yeah. then what happens is, is you become invaluable. Yeah. You become that person, that go-to person that used to mop the floors that ends up owning the whole damn restaurant. Yes. You become that person that everybody says, listen, I don't, I don't know what you do or what department you're in, but your energy is so freaking fantastic that I want you I in my that. department. I want to uh, give you a raise. I want you to be on the management team, mm -hmm. right? This is the thing that so many people get, um, what's the word? They get... Um, confused about. Mm -hmm. They think if I complain a bunch or if I show up half-assed, half ass, maybe then change. I'll get a raise. No. Maybe they'll want me to stay around. They won't. You know? They will probably fire you. People love being around <laughs> successful people, people who feel good. Energy uh, is, is um, contagious. It's contagious. When, when someone is lit up and on fire and loving and moving from that space and they're, they're, they're showing up at their job, whether it's being a waiter or your cubicle, if you can make that thing fun, yeah, it changes everything. You become invaluable. What's interesting, and I actually just thought about this, mm -hmm. I got my first television job from mm -hmm. one of my bartending clients. Of course. Who came in and we just struck up a conversation and I was bringing my joy and bringing my crazy personality. And he was producing a show and was like, you would be perfect to host this show. Yep. And that was my first hosting job. I didn't have an agent. I didn't go into casting. I booked it right there. And from there, I showed up every single day on set as that person, full of joy, full of life, full of giving, full of that outflow. And sure enough, that led to more and more jobs. So it's totally a testament. If you're not attached to it, of how it looks like, and you're just giving your gift and living your gift, yep. 
That's where everything shifts. And guys, it's not about money. So many people think it's the money. It's not the freaking money, guys. It's the way you experience life. As above, so below. As within, so without. The yeah. outer world is always, always a reflection of the inner world. And so you really get to take a deeper look. If you're calling in more financial abundance, how you're actually showing up, yeah. how you're feeling about you, what, what work are you doing on you, right? The greatest project you'll ever work on is yourself. You make you awesome, you fill your cup and give from the overflow, everything shifts, everything changes. Everything reflects Then that. you may not even need or want more money. It may not even be about that. And then you will get to this place where when you're so tapped in and you're so clear about your gifts, then your gifts will make room for you. This is literally what we're living in. Yeah. We, can't, we can't stay away from money. It chases us. Yeah. We are having conversations around lots of money and going, hmm, no. Nah. It's not in we, our highest excitement. We just got off of a, a, a phone call about, well, I mean, lots of phone calls about a TV show. Yeah. And you know what's awesome? We don't give a fuck. Like, it's okay, it. we don't need it. Yeah. We don't need it. That's, that's a weapon. When you don't actually need it because you're so clear that whether you have 10 million in the bank or $10, you are perfect, whole, and complete, and everything is taken care of, all needs met right here, right now, that's a game changer. It is. And I want to point something out because I, I don't know who said it, but somebody said, you know, I love you guys, and yes, but the job thing is not so easy for all of us. And mm -hmm. There's a lot of conversation like, oh, easy for you guys to say. You grew up here. And, did it. and we hear it all the time. So we appreciate it and we totally respect where you're coming from. And I just want to add, I have learned so much mm -hmm. from my travels. I have met so many people with Preston and without Preston before we met each other. And he has as well. People who have come from literal nothingness. Like no clean water, no electricity, no uh, nobody in their family having even a high school, let alone middle school yes. education, that have made something for themselves. Why? Because they tapped into their passion, they tapped into their service, they tapped into their gift, and they live from a space of gratitude. Yeah. So here's the thing too, a lot of people in the Western developed world think, oh, these poor people in all these other places. <laughs> Guess what? News flash. A lot of these people, when we stay with these people, we don't stay in hotels when we go there, we stay in homestays. We stay there. Those people are so much more wealthy than most people in the Western world. And they have way less than we do. Mm -hmm. Some of them live on less than a dollar a day. But the difference, gratitude. The difference, they're actually tapped into what abundant living means. Yes. It means living from a space of love, of mm -hmm. community, of family, of giving, of service, of, of bringing people together, of celebrating life. So many of us are so out of practice of celebrating life and we wonder why life is hard. Because you're not celebrating it as a yes. gift. And I say this as a reminder to any of you who are having a hard day, and I have them all the time, where I'm like so overwhelmed and I just want to fucking cry. And I remind myself, like, pull yourself up, Lex. There are people out there who have way less than you have, who are doing it with a smile on their face. Yes. Because they're grateful for life, and you're just being a brat right now. Yep. Yeah. And it's okay to be a brat, but... Yeah, I'm a brat all the time. Yeah. <laughs> the, the thing... Uh, damn, I was going to say something. First of all, um, we love you guys. And for all of you who actually stuck through this whole thing... You're awesome. You're amazing. Um, we see, I see so many names on there that I yes. love. I just want to shout all of you out. Matt, uh, Matthew Scott Donnelly is the, is the kid I was telling you about. Oh, yeah, yes. He's awesome. Um, awesome. Follow that dude if you haven't followed him. Um, also, we're on Snapchat now. We, oh, we, we are. We tried something new. Oh my God, you guys. We, we were so vehemently opposed to Snapchat <laughs> for a very long time. We were like, Snapchat? No. Uh -huh. No. And um, we met an amazing woman in Italy at this business conference that we were at. And she talked us into Snapchat. Yeah, so let's just put them on it right now. Yeah. We're right. on Snapchat. For you guys on Snapchat, what's our name on there? Alexi and Preston. Alexi and Preston on Snapchat, if you guys are on that thing. You guys are on our snappy snap right now. I don't even know how to do it. I'm just snapping. I'm just pushing stuff. She's just snapping. I'm snapping. Um, snap attack. It's happening. Money. One last thing or a few last things about money and this whole conversation. You really get to ask yourself, what is it that I'm looking to experience? Because a lot of times when you, when you get down to it, it's like, I just want to feel worthy. 
I just want to feel like I accomplished something, like I'm, like I'm, you know, worth something. And and here's the thing. I said this before. Sometimes you need to downgrade your things to upgrade your experiences. A lot of people talk yes. about us and how we're all over the world. Well, listen, we don't own many things because we don't buy stuff. We don't buy a bunch of junk, and we we're not, you know. Like, uh, we don't own TVs, we don't buy jewelry. It's just not our flow. And so sometimes uh, you got to give up to go up, you got to give up to grow up. And so sacrificing some of the short term gain in, in order to experience long term uh, you know, experiences and having fun and like actually enjoying and experiencing life, like that's the game to play. A lot of you, uh, you know, you may find that when you really break it down, you're really just looking to feel. Uh, fulfilled and and or free and free. Yeah, that's the big one. And guys, we hear this all the time: financial freedom. It's bullshit. Yeah, that's an oxymoron. Like finances and freedom don't go together. It just it's not true. It doesn't hurt to be wealthy. <laughs> Money is a vehicle. It's fantastic. It's awesome. It takes you places maybe faster. Yeah. But you can still get there by walking. Oh yeah. Just FYI. And you don't have to buy the boat, you can rent the boat. You can, you can meet some people who have one. And you may find that you get on the boat and go, yeah, I, I can see it. I actually don't want a boat. Yeah, I don't actually <laughs> like boats. I just thought I did because... Because Instagram told me that's what I've been to sold be a boss. my whole I'm life. I'm a boat. Exactly. Hustle hard, I'm bitches. Um, Alright, we gotta go. We um, do. We're, we're going to our friend's show. Share this, if this inspired, if it entertained. If it pumped we you a little bit. love you guys. Yeah, we pissed some people off definitely in the beginning for sure. Yeah. Um, love is still conditional for the most part <laughs> when it comes to the human experience. If you're in a relationship with other humans, you have conditions, which is why you get of pissed off. The minute of you're pissed off or triggered or frustrated, it's a condition. Yes. Let's just be honest about it. Yeah. And it's okay. It's okay. It's fantastic. Yeah. We love you guys. It's all good. All right. If this inspired you, please share. If not, um, screw you. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, and. Uh, if any of you want to get in the practice of what it feels like Ooh. to actually experience abundant living, I'm doing a challenge, a free challenge tomorrow, seven days of soul. Sign up, alexipanos.com forward slash challenge. Get it. Sign up. We start tomorrow, guys, and it's literally what exactly what we talked about. It's getting in the practice of abundant living. And if any of you are in LA or Virginia and you want to actually- Or Toronto. Or Toronto. Or the UK. Or London in the UK and you want to experience us in person going deep, balls deep, all kinds of balls, lady balls, man balls, all the way in Basketball. experiential <laughs> somatic learning where we take you to the next level, support you in going to the next level and seeing what's there, go to bridgeexperience.com, bridgeexperience.com, bridgeexperience.com. Blah! Rastafari, we love you guys. This is the Partners in Shine show. I'm Preston Smiles. I'm Alexi Panos. Blessings and blessings is going down in, in a beautiful, beautiful, major way.